This video is to help you revise the carbon cycle and it's geared loosely towards the Irish Leaving Cert Biology course. The carbon cycle is essential. Why? Because carbon is an element essential to life on Earth. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is the main source of carbon for all living organisms on this planet. To appreciate just how essential carbon is, consider the biomolecules, those molecules made inside living organisms. They all contain carbon. It was that one element that they all had in common. The carbohydrates, the lipids, the proteins, the vitamins and nucleic acids, DNA, the main one, all contain carbon. So let's consider cells the most simplest or basic unit of life. Think about what goes into making a cell, all of those particular features, and think about the molecules that are involved in making those membranes, the enzymes, the amino acids, the ribosomes, they all contain carbon. If there's no carbon, there's no life. Less than 1% of the Earth's atmosphere contains carbon dioxide, and this is our main source of carbon, so you see how important it is that all carbon is recycled. To ensure that carbon is available and is constantly recycled, there are certain key processes that are involved in the carbon cycle. Photosynthesis, respiration, consumption and feeding, decay, combustion and weathering is another, and you should know where each of these fit in the cycle and the role they play. The whole carbon cycle begins with photosynthesis. Remember, our main source of carbon is atmospheric carbon dioxide. It enters into the leaves of green plants. Using light energy, it will eventually get converted into a sugar known as glucose. And you remember the formula for glucose, C6H12O6. In ecology, we studied pyramids of numbers. It was a way of representing the number of organisms at each trophic level in a food chain. Now we can appreciate not just the energy being passed onwards, but also the carbon that's going to be passed onwards upwards through the chain. So carbon gets fixed into organisms as it moves along. It's very important to recognize that photosynthesis is not just happening on land, it's happening on a huge scale in the oceans, where CO2 is being used by these microorganisms known as phytoplankton. They form the bottom of the aquatic food web, they are the producers. In much the same way as on land, carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere. It then enters the oceans, where it is used by the phytoplankton to photosynthesize. These phytoplankton, these microscopic organisms, get eaten by other organisms and the carbon in them gets used or fixed to form different new biomolecules and it passes along the food chain. And remember that all living things respire, so when you respire you release carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, so all of these organisms in the ocean are respiring, returning CO2 to the atmosphere. And as respiration is a characteristic of life, it's being carried out by all living organisms on the land also. That includes microscopic organisms. CO2 is being returned to the atmosphere in this process. All living things eventually die. Death and decay are a feature of the carbon cycle. Microorganisms break down organic matter and in so doing respire, releasing that carbon in the form of carbon dioxide back to the atmosphere. Incomplete decay also features in the carbon cycle, and this leads to the formation of fossil fuels such as coal, oil, peat and gas. Also, it's important to remember that carbon can be trapped in stone, for example limestone, remember the shellfish. Combustion of fossil fuels emits a huge amount of carbon dioxide back to the atmosphere, and once again that carbon dioxide is made available to plants for photosynthesis. It's also important to remember that carbon dioxide dissolves in the oceans, so oceans are referred to as carbon sinks. There's also a lot of organisms with shells that contain carbon as carbonate, and when these die, they get compressed and they form limestone. The weathering of limestone returns carbon as carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So let's see if we can make a flow diagram of the carbon cycle. Most of our carbon comes from carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It is removed from the atmosphere by a process known as photosynthesis. This can happen not only on land, but also in the oceans. All of those organisms that are photosynthesizing are also at the same time releasing carbon dioxide back to the atmosphere in the process known as respiration. All organisms will eventually die, and what follows death is decay. Decay is conducted or carried out by microorganisms, which also return CO2 back to the atmosphere in the form of respiration. Sometimes, though, there is incomplete decay. 
and this leads to the formation of fossil fuels. When they are burned, this is combustion, and this releases a huge amount of CO2 back to the atmosphere. A lot of carbon is trapped in rocks, and when this rock is weathered or erosion occurs, a lot of CO2 will eventually make its way back to the atmosphere in this way. So there is another way in which a lot of CO2 is emitted back to the atmosphere, and this is through volcanic eruption. So bear in mind what happened this summer as well, forest fires. That would have created a lot of extra CO2 going back into the atmosphere. So that was the carbon cycle. For your exams, just be aware of how humans are contributing to the rising levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide. So deforestation is a huge feature, particularly in the Amazon. So when you cut down trees, remember trees absorb a lot of CO2 for photosynthesis. If you remove the trees, you will leave a lot of CO2 carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Also, an increase in the combustion of fossil fuels leads to an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This then, it gives an enhanced greenhouse effect that gives warmer temperatures. This leads to climate change. And also remember as well that when the oceans get warm, they hold less CO2. So the best of luck with your revision. Be aware that this is a much summarized version of the carbon cycle.